Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and on the bench today we have a Cobra 0148 GTL DX that's been sent in for a good um, a good going over should we say and an assessment as to the um, extra clicks on the band switch but before we start don't forget to like share subscribe comment join Facebook join Patreon buy me coffee have a look on my website microchips.net and let's get started. So, a Cobra 148 GTLDX. And the front um, metal work is flapping about in the breeze. And something's definitely been changed on the band switch. Feels a lot more clunky than what it normally is. Still got a notch in the in the um, in the course tune. But apart from that, everything seems to be okay. Is it a genuine Cobra? Certainly looks like it. So let's have a look inside, see if there's any horror stories to do with that switch. So we are greeted with a modification board. Not seen this style of mod board before, but you know, I'm sure there was many around but looking at it everything seems fine looks like there's a uk offset um trimmer there this mod board seems to be partly flapping about in the breeze it doesn't look too bad everything else looks fine well at least whoever's done this hasn't cut all the tracks underneath and who knows what that chip is. I don't think it's a PIC chip. It must be an EEPROM of some variety. But anyway, at least there's possibly going to be no massive amount of cut tracks. So that's something to be thankful for. And we've got some service stickers. Anybody recognises those? Let me know. But it seems to have been to the same person three times by the looks of it and that's got a date code of 1986 by simon okay well, well that uk40 trimmer looks okay so we'll leave it alone so taking off the circuit board side and there is obviously some Modifications gone there, There's some diodes on the adders, something on the back of the PLL, and a wire connecting to the 5KC pin, which goes off to the channel 9 switch. I'm not sure how they've implemented that when there's no cut tracks, but, but having a look around, there's a little bit of a burn mark at that, that point in the top. We'll have to have a look at that. But apart from that, everything everything seems to be okay. So let's fire it up and have a look. Okay, super low band, that's fine. No variable power mod. And next switch, got low band, mid band, high band, and UK40. Okay, not too shabby. That's absolutely fine. We've got a nice power output on all the bands. Let's flick that 5KC switch. And of course it sends it into, into somewhere else. I really don't know why they've done this modification. I know it puts it on 5KCs, but it doesn't drop it onto 5KC that the channel you're on. But it does, it does drop it down onto 25 megahertz, which is interesting. So that's the um, 12 metre band, I believe. So maybe it's useful for 12 metres. Who knows? But anyway, everything else looks just fine. You may have noticed there's no illumination behind the signal meter. That's another reported fault. Nothing on the ANL and tone switches. No 10kc jumps or anything. 
tune still works as to be expected. So it's fine. Just having a look at the receive and it is receiving. The meter's working on receive. And we have transmit audio. Okay. Well, radio's in working condition. Just needs a good um, going over. So what I've got planned for this radio is we want to do a full recap on it. And as I was taking the capacitors out, I noticed this. So that will kind of correlate with the heat mark we had underneath. And you can see there's a nice split down the side of the diode. So obviously this has been reverse polarity some time. Now the question is, is this still a diode or has it left this world? So let's test it on the meter and have a look. So we're on diode test and it still thinks it's a diode. For how long it would have lasted under another reverse polarity, who knows? But it still thinks it's a diode but we're going to replace it anyway, and we're going to put an extra one across the power. So I've started the recap, and as I was taking the can off there, there's a couple of capacitors across the back of the VCO coil. So maybe that's for broadbanding, who knows? So there's a nice new diode in its place. It will finally fit the final capacitor into the board and we can finally get it in. As you can see we've done the regulator upgrades as well. So it's had a full going over. So there's all our capacitors that we've taken out. And there's our nicely recapped unit. All looking very good. And I don't, normally don't do recaps, but I wanted to try it again. See if there is any faulty capacitors. So, not too bad. Looking good inside. So, I've tested all the capacitors. And I've only found two that are out of, out of tolerance. So, there's a 100 mic, 10 volt. And you can see it's, it's low, but it's still still works but it's well out and there's a 4.7 mic there that's gone that's gone high now we all know these 10 volt caps like to short for the fun of it so yeah there is method in doing the recap and there's also method to to leaving it so as normal just going to use the thermal imaging meter on first switch on to see if anything's getting overly hot immediately. And on switch on we have a heat spot from the EEPROM board and that's those two resistors on the, um, on the pick board, EEPROM board, whatever it is, getting nice and toasty. But everywhere else is getting, everywhere else is staying nice and cool. There's a heat spot around the um, the eight volt regulator, which is absolutely fine. There's a heat spot around those components in the middle that always seems to get warm. So that's fine. And those resistors on the EEPROM board are absolutely getting toasty. But it's probably worked for 30 years, so why change it? It's those two. So yeah, nothing getting hot. We'll leave it at that. So I'm just going to transmit and we'll watch that regulator get very toasty very quickly. As you can see on FM transmission, this thing gets 
warm very quick. But it's only to be expected. We've got a nice upgrade on it. So that shouldn't be failing anytime soon. Yeah, all good. Everything's getting nicely warm. So we'll start doing some alignment. So we're on TP3, we're on channel 19 mid band, and we need to set those to 490, 4875, and 4925. So there's 490. 4925 and 4875. We'll just readjust that end coil, and there it is. These things do like to move when they're warm. So, the next issue to address is the bulb out in the meter. So I'm not going to put an LED in, I'm just going to replace it with a suitable grain of wheat bulb. So we'll cut off the old bulb and we will join on our new bulb onto the end of those wires. So there's our bulb, just about, just about the same size as the old one. We've put a little bit of shrink sleeve in onto the wires. We'll quickly and gently solder those up and then we will put some shrink sleeving to protect the um to protect the wires and insulate the wires. This is the time when you need three hands, but we've got it. We'll put the put the shrink sleeve in over the leads and give it a little warm up with a little bit of fire. And there we go. Very nice. Pop the bulb back into the meter. And there we go. Working nicely, just as intended. So the customer also wants me to fit a frequency counter. So we will do that. So we've got the wiring harness. So we need to attach the USB LSB power and obviously the VCO signal on TP3. So there it is. Installed, we we'll put a cable uh, cable tie on the inside for a bit of strain relief. That should do nicely. So now to address this front, as you can see, all the glue has turned to turned to dust basically. So we'll get off what we can with a bit of ISO. not going to spend ages picking the glue off doesn't need to there's plenty of surface area to stick onto so we put some um, double-sided tissue tape on the back of the the front metal work and we'll just drop it into place give it a good press down and that should adhere quite nicely So no more flapping about in the breeze. So I've just got my signal generator producing minus 72 dB, which should be an S9. So we'll adjust the signal meter for an S9. We'll check the UK, um, the UK offset adjustment. That's good enough. We'll finish the job off with some nice new shiny, shiny stainless steel screws. And there we have it. There's our Cobra 148G TLDX finally done 
with its frequency counter. It's had a good, good, um, a good check over. Everything is aligned quite nicely. It's as on frequency as you can get one of these. Yeah, nice radio. Very nice indeed. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me coffee, have a look at my website, microchips.net. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.